I've always been passionate about climate change, but I never imagined that I would be taking action using poop. Every time you flush the toilet, you're sending valuable carbon out of sight and out of mind. But did you know that we can use that carbon for fuel? I'm Lillian Zaremba, and my team is turning poop into low carbon transportation fuels. We're piloting a new technology that could revolutionize wastewater treatment and the biofuels industry. Our project is years in the making. In 2014, I joined Metro Vancouver. One of my colleagues, Paul Kadoda, came back from a conference all excited after meeting a professor who was turning algae into biocrude oil. He wondered if we could use wastewater sludge to do the same thing. It seemed far-fetched at first. I used to think that fossil fuels came from dead dinosaurs. Well, in fact, petroleum comes from algae, plankton, and bacteria that were buried under layers of sediment. So this idea of converting algae to fuel made sense. And then I learned that wastewater sludge is actually mostly bacteria that have broken down the carbon in our sewage. So maybe this could work. My colleague proposed a research trial to test whether sludge could be converted into biocrude oil using hydrothermal liquefaction. This process mimics how fossil fuels were formed. It uses heat and pressure to convert biomass to oil, but does it in minutes instead of millions of years. For the trial, we sent sludge from our Anasis Island wastewater treatment plant to the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, which had developed the hydrothermal liquefaction process. First, our team had to dewater the sludge for transportation. After some broken equipment, the team resorted to manually squeezing the sludge, sort of like using cheesecloth. And the trial was a success. It produced bio-crude oil that could be refined into sustainable aviation fuel, marine biofuel, and biodiesel for trains and trucks. These are all transportation sectors that are difficult to electrify. I was captivated by this tiny jar of huge potential. Fast forward a few years, and we received approval and funding to construct a demonstration-scale hydrothermal liquefaction facility at our Anasis Island wastewater treatment plant. And I'm now leading the team. Metro Vancouver is the first utility to attempt this, and the eyes of the world are on us to prove it. That little trial has spawned a major undertaking. A team of engineers is designing and fabricating the first scaled-up system of its kind. We're partnering with Parkland to test and process the biocrude at their nearby refinery. And we have a research partnership with the University of British Columbia to see if we can extract more resources out of the liquid and solid byproducts that remain after hydrothermal liquefaction. Maybe we can close the nutrient cycle as well as closing the carbon cycle. Reflecting on the climate crisis, it's a result of our ability as humans to greatly accelerate processes like extracting and consuming resources. In the blink of an eye, geologically speaking, we've transformed our planet's ecology and climate. The hydrothermal liquefaction project is also using that human ability to accelerate, but as a force for good. We're speeding up a process that would take millions of years in nature, and in a matter of minutes, transforming biomass into low carbon oil. To address the climate emergency, we're pivoting from resource use and waste to a circular approach that is part of carbon and nutrient cycles that have evolved over billions of years. Looking back on the journey, it's amazing how an idea sparked from a conversation led to this groundbreaking project. It could be a game changer to transform how communities across the continent manage their waste and address the climate emergency. Thank you.